Dr. Sandy Kramer is here with Dr. Rena Garg. We're both surgeons here at Visionary Eye Doctors. Thank you for joining us. Today we're going to talk about glaucoma. Uh, please don't forget to pass us on and subscribe to our podcast, The EYE Show, and also on YouTube. So I'm going to introduce Dr. Garg, who's a glaucoma specialist from Columbia University in New York City, and we're going to go through this potentially blinding disease called glaucoma, and then we're going to go through how we detect early glaucoma. So we're going to go through some very exciting new technology. So Dr. Gar, tell me a little bit about well, how do you tell patients about glaucoma? Sure. So thanks, Dr. Kummers, for having me. Excited to be here. So uh, I like to explain glaucoma as a group of diseases that affects the optic nerve. The optic nerve um, is sometimes a little hard for patients to understand what exactly it does. Uh, the way I explain it is the optic nerve is the structure that connects the eyes to the brain. So if you imagine you have a lamp, you have a bright, beautiful, well-functioning bulb, and you have a good, powerful electrical source, if they're not communicating and talking with the cord, you're never going to see light. And in much the same way, the optic nerve functions as that cord. So no matter how healthy the eye is or how healthy the brain is, if there's no connection, you're not going to see a nice picture or you're not going to see anything at all. And just like any other nerve in the body, if it's damaged, we can't replace it and we can't fix it. So everything we do is to check the health of the optic nerve, fix any issues that may be causing damage or, or, or degeneration of the optic nerve, and then continue to monitor it so that nothing ever changes, so patients can maintain their good, healthy vision throughout their lifetime. One of the main important things that if you are a glaucoma patient or if there is a suspicion for glaucoma is that your doctor will be checking your optic nerve with a special machine called an OCT, and that is ocular coherence tomography. Basically what that is, it's a very fancy machine that takes thousands of cuts and pictures of your optic nerve to get very fine details of each nerve fiber to figure out if any of them are damaged or at risk of being damaged. Here we have a uh, picture example of a report that you might see from your doctor. There are two main machines. There's the Heidelberg machine and then there's the, the Zeiss or Cirrus machine. Both are really good at imaging the optic nerve. The important thing is, you'll see, there will be a picture on each scan of your optic nerve. And the machine is now going to be checking all the nerve fibers coming out of that optic nerve to check its health and to check how well uh, we are treating the glaucoma and maintaining your vision. To get a little bit more in detail into the scans, you can see here the optic nerve is imaged uh, and in the Heidelberg machine. The green circle around each nerve indicates where exactly the machine is measuring the nerve fibers. And you can see in, this, in the Cirrus machine, it also has that same circle. The important things that your doctor is gonna look at is actually down here. There are some actual measurements, actual measurements of how many microns, think about it, microns, tiny, tiny, tiny measurements of how thick your optic nerve is. And the insulation, right? It's more exactly. the myelin layer around, so it's like a insulated cable that we're looking to see if that insulation is, is decreasing. decreasing. Okay. Exactly, you got it. And so your doctor will be p paying very close attention to these numbers down here, and even a change of about five to 10 microns on either machine, on either measurement, could indicate a problem. And that's essentially what your doctor will be looking for. They may check this test once or twice a year, because depending on how concerned they are that your optic nerve is changing. Um, One question, Dr. Sure. Garg, about the basically kind of this curve. Sure. Can you explain to everybody the, why the curve is important? Absolutely. So there's a curve for each optic nerve. In the Heidelberg machine, you'll see it here. And in the Zeiss machine, you'll see it here, the two eyes kind of superimposed on each other. The curve is important because it's actually measuring the thickness at different points in the optic nerve. You'll see in small print here, it says temporal, superior, nasal, inferior, and then temporal again. And basically, it's measuring four points around the circle, almost like a clock, at 12, 6, Six, three, and nine. And those are important points because we know that the optic nerve is thickest at 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock, or superior and inferior. And we also know that when patients have glaucoma, they tend to lose nerve fibers at those two points first, and then later in the disease, they lose it at other points. So you'll see these curves to basically show where your optic nerve, that's the black line here, lies in comparison to a generalized or normalized population. And that is the uh, information that the machine, the company, has put together and put into the machine so that 
we, as the physicians, can compare your optic nerve to what's considered quote unquote normal. Great. So green is good. Green is good. Yellow is a little concerning. We have a little yellow over here, for yes. instance. And then what's the difference between green, yellow, and red in terms of thinness? Great question. So green means that you are on curve exactly in line with your age-matched normal nerve fiber layer thickness. Yellow means that basically it's a, it's a warning sign mm -hmm. for us doctors to look closely at that spot mm -hmm. when we examine your nerve, to look closely at that spot to see if there's anything concerning. And then red, unfortunately, indicates most likely loss of optic nerve fibers. Again, your doctor will always confirm this by examining your eyes to make sure that the machine is actually picking up what what they're seeing mm -hmm. on the exam. But uh, when we see red, that's the point where we start to get con mm -hmm. concerned that the glaucoma might either be there or it may be progressing. So that's a good point. So sometimes, uh, kind of going back a little bit to understanding, you were talking about, are these good images? Do we need to repeat this to confirm it's a real defect or not? So tell me a little bit about the centration when you're sure. looking at this. So I, ideally you want to see it centered, but when would you actually repeat this? Let's say that this was a patient of yours. Would you say this patient for sure has early glaucoma in the left eye or would you repeat it before you say it? I would probably, this is a pretty good test on the left side from the Heidelberg machine. I would, I would most likely diagnose this patient with glaucoma. Mm -hmm. You know, the other part of it is also examining the patient. Mm -hmm. So we would check their intraocular pressure. We would look at the front part of the eye, the back part of the eye, the optic nerve to see if we see any other signs that correlate with glaucoma. Um, but I would say that based on this picture alone, it's very suspicious and concerning that the patient has glaucoma in the left eye. And I, it, I usually view these images before I go in the room to see the patient. And if I were, you know, about to go see this patient, in my head, I would already be saying, well, I need to really examine this patient closely because I'm, I'm worried based mm -hmm. on what I'm seeing here. And glaucoma is a potentially blinding disease. As you mm -hmm. said, there's no real cure. We're just right. trying to slow it down. Exactly. And so we treat it pretty aggressively when there's any early change. Exactly. Can you comment on the different types of tests? You know, we've used high, uh, the visual field, sure. uh, VEP. What, how would you kind sure, of explain absolutely. those? So this is just one of basically many. many. Yes. Uh, so kind of tell us a little bit about your experience sure. with those. Yeah, absolutely. So the mainstays for testing or diagnosing and monitoring glaucoma treatment and progression would be probably the OCT and the visual field. Those are probably the two most important tests that as a glaucoma patient or a glaucoma suspect, you'll be getting at least once a year. The OCT we kind of talked about, that's the picture of the optic nerve to measure, quantify, measure the health of the optic nerve and to watch the progression over time. So that will be done yearly, maybe twice yearly, depending mm -hmm, on mm -hmm. your needs. Um, the second part of it is to check the functional part, meaning how are you affected in your day to day by the glaucoma if you have it, or are there early vision changes that maybe you haven't noticed? At, unfortunately, we call glaucoma the silent thief of sight because glaucoma does first affect the very far side vision, and our brains are really smart. They're really good at adapting, fight or flight. You can lose some of your peripheral vision, but our brain will adapt so that we can still function, which is a good thing, but not a good thing when you have glaucoma because you actually have to lose 50% of your peripheral vision before you can pick it up on your own. So. In the, in the doctor's office, we'll do a test called a visual field. And that does a good job of measuring out not how clearly you see the world, but how much of the world around you you see. And it really tests your par far peripheral vision. And that's a test to see, okay, maybe you have some damage on your optic nerve, but has that actually affected your visual field? And our goal is that even if you have early damage on your optic nerve, we catch it before it affects your visual field so that you as a patient never notice you have a problem and you live a long, healthy, full vision life. That's a great explanation. So I was taught in residency you had to lose 30% of your nerve fiber layer before you had a visual field defect. Is that still true? That's that's still true. Okay. I mean, the good news is that we have uh, different types of visual fields now, and you mentioned VEP. Mm -hmm. We have other tests for functional vision. VEP is called visually evoked potential, and essentially what that is is using um, electrodes. So those are measures of electrical stimuli in your brain and give it, presenting stimuli to your eyes and seeing where in your brain is activated. And the goal is that you see kind of 
all areas of the visual field and your brain does get stimulated. So that shows that you have good field of vision, good strength of vision. So we have other tests than we did when I trained, mm -hmm. which I don't want to admit how many years ago that was, <laughs> but we have other tests that can pick up uh, visual field loss even sooner than a typical visual field. Mm -hmm. um, but you're right, you have to lose about 30% of your optic nerve before it actually shows up on the visual field. So that's the beauty of the OCT and exactly. the HRT. So can you also describe the difference? Why do you prefer one test over another? Sure, so absolutely. this is more for the yes. kind of doctors in the crowd <laughs> or uh, people that want to get the, into the nitty gritty, but I do want to hear sure. uh, the difference here. Sure, so. absolutely. So, you know, there are pros and cons of both machines. They're both great machines. You get great information. So I think you really can't go wrong. Um, as a glaucoma specialist, the uh, Zeiss machine has an additional module called the ganglion cell analysis. Mm -hmm. um, and that actually filters out the very superficial part of the central part of the retina called the macula. Mm -hmm. And um, there have been some studies, very strong, powerful studies, to show that there actually might be loss of the nerve fibers in the macula before we actually see it at the level of the optic nerve. And so, you know, the goal in glaucoma ultimately as a glaucoma specialist, as an ophthalmologist, treating and diagnosing glaucoma, you would agree, is to mm -hmm. catch it early catch it fast. Mm -hmm. If we could predict who's going to get it mm -hmm. and treat it before they get it, I mean, that would be the gold standard. Mm -hmm. And so the additional module with the ganglion cell analysis is nice because we're picking up visual field, I'm sorry, we're picking up optic nerve changes before they even happen at the level of the optic mm -hmm. nerve. So in theory, we could pick it up before the optic nerve head itself gets damaged. Beautiful. So where is that on this um, So that's actually not on this analysis. Okay. Um, that's a, a different printout. So do you look at both of those I printouts? Do. So I do. When they put it into the actual, you're actually going to that Exactly. Okay, I usually great. look at okay, them good. side by side. Got it. Perfect. Just like this, but I'll have the one of the center of okay, the great. retina. So we'll have to do a cut out on that. I'd like yes, to see yeah, that. So yeah. tell me uh, here, what are you sure. looking for and what does it add compared? Are these pretty much the same as they are they right are now? They are pretty okay. much the same. Um, so two things. One, the Zeiss uh, uh, normative database is a little bit larger okay. than the Heidelberg mm -hmm. one. So I think that gives a little bit more valuable mm -hmm. information. But it is important to keep in mind that the normative database for Zeiss is only about 200 patients. Oh, wow. And, so and it's it about like, half for really? Heidelberg. Really? That's incredible. So, okay. you know, um, one thing I like to, you know, when I teach the mm -hmm. residents, I like to tell them, I don't want to hear about, you know, colors are good to explain to patients, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I want you looking at the numbers mm -hmm, and the actual mm -hmm. thickness because, um, you know, of the normative database, two, I think it was 238 patients, and I think 78% of them were Caucasian. Oh, and wow. As so you it's, know, very, yeah, our it's a very low sample size, right? Exactly. Yeah. Not only Caucasians get glaucoma. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so, you know, there's not a lot of good normative database for other minorities. Right. So, normative so, meaning just the general population, we're comparing a patient to the normal exactly. is the, the that number of cases is so small. Exactly. So, okay, so tell so me how to you use the, the numbers. Then. Absolutely. So, um, you know, a couple of things. One, the average thickness I think is very helpful mm -hmm. because it just tells you kind of the overall picture. It's a good number to compare from visit to visit because right off the bat it gives you an idea, oh, the average thickness dropped about 10 points, okay. so I'm, mm -hmm. I'm concerned. I need to look mm -hmm. a little bit closer. The second thing is, this picture is nice. I mean, this one is a little bit off-center, mm -hmm. so I probably would reorder this one and Got have, it. have okay. it redone. Okay. Um, but I really like how it segments out the nerve fiber layer, mm -hmm. and you can actually see and check exactly where the nerve fiber layer is being segmented out at different portions of the optic nerve. So when you see, make, mean segmented out, what do you mean by that? So it basically, it's there is a red line and there's a black line and you can see exactly where the machine has decided the nerve fiber layer falls and it specifically okay. tells you you know when you're going from temporal to nasal okay. so this would be in the superior cut mm -hmm. and then here when you're going in the horizontal cut over here and so what are you specifically horizontal. looking for? And you're and you're looking to make sure, so this is a very poor segmentation. Okay. You see how the black line is non-continuous? Yes. Whereas here, you can see mm -hmm. there's a nice divot of the optic nerve okay. where the disc is and the cup. That's the cup. So is it telling you the quality of the test or exactly. is it telling you the quantity of the nerve fiber? It's layer? telling you the quality. The quality. So you so can actually the visualize the quality I see. of the segmentation. And what is this here then in terms of... So uh, this, it looks like they kind of cut through the optic nerves. Okay. So okay, this is it. actually so not the a edge great. Of, this is not a great. Exactly. So you no. want, this is a better. This study. is a much better but study. But this, these three boxes tell you how good the study is. Exactly. Got it. So you when the technicians it. are doing it, they should be looking for something that has more 
kind of the, a this divot exact and also beautiful, it's centered. Yep, got you it. got it. Wonderful. And that it should be centered. Um, the next thing is here, as we talked about comparing your eye to the normative database. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is the neuroretinal rim thickness. Mm -hmm. So it tells you how thick the actual optic nerve is for, as you said, for the doctors in the group. When you're actually looking at the rim of the optic nerve, you may quantify and say there's thinning superiorly, inferiorly, or whatever. You may write mm -hmm. that on your chart. But this will actually tell you that, mm -hmm. you know, there is thinning in this particular patient. The dotted line is the left eye. There is thinning that was found superiorly and inferiorly. Mm -hmm. And that correlates here with the retinal nerve fiber layer thickness, which is actually looking at the, as uh, Dr. Kermer has mentioned, the insulation or the myelination mm -hmm. of the nerve fibers. Um, and then for me, what's most important is actually looking down at this bottom plot and looking at the numbers. I love the segmentation. It gives a lot more segments than uh, other printouts Correct, compared do. to even the HRT. Exactly. Yep. Okay. And so I think you can pick out very small wedge defects. A wedge defect is mm -hmm. really just one bundle of nerve fiber mm -hmm. layer that innervates a certain part of the retina. So it's more sensitive to some extent. Exactly. Okay. exactly. And so let's say we're looking at, this is the patient's right eye, this is the patient's left eye. Yes. And in the right eye, this is the same patient. Yes. And it's saying there might be early glaucoma, whereas the HRT is saying, well, maybe they're okay. So you would more rely on this I to would. make a decision. Per I would. Se. Okay, because there, as I mentioned, there's smaller segmentation. So I think it picks up things a little bit more sensitively then. Great. Does this help at all in terms of the blue color? Why is that? that it does. So where's the blue so, showing So this us? is a, actually a heat map. Okay. So, you know, red means something that's closer to you. Blue means something that's farther mm -hmm. away. So if there's maybe some debris or opacity, it might pick that up. Got so it. that's okay. good to know for artifact. Mm -hmm. um, if also there's thickening because of, you know, some swelling of the optic nerve for some reason, maybe something is going on in the brain or mm -hmm. something's going on behind the optic nerve, so you it can will pick see that up. It's what's called uh, CME, you can see edema or swelling in exactly. the macula based on this as well. Exactly. Yep. Okay. And then in terms of the yellow, what is that telling you along so the those blood are, vessels? Yep. So those are the vessels. Again, it's just a heat map, so it's showing that okay. they're a little bit warmer, they're a little bit higher. But it won't um, tell you if somebody has like hypertensive retinopathy or diabetic no, retinopathy. No. It, it. It, okay. It's more of a, a check to say that, hey, you need to go look closely at this Got it. Okay, part of great. the So eye. if you see red... Then you would want to see what's going on in that Go area. Go examine a okay, little more closely. Anything else on the numbers of this? Yes, box? actually, that's a good point. So, you know, I get a lot of referrals, and you probably get mm -hmm. a lot of referrals too for glaucoma suspicion. Mm -hmm. This patient mm -hmm. has a large cup to disc, mm -hmm. um, but you end up examining them, and their eyes look healthy. Mm -hmm. They do have a large cup mm -hmm. to disc, um, and oftentimes we call this physiologic cupping. Mm -hmm. And I find this machine to be really helpful because it actually gives a measure of disc area, and we know that one of the things about large cup to disc, the cup up is actually the empty space inside the disc, which is the measure of the entire optic nerve. Mm -hmm. So if you have a large disc area, you still have about one million nerve fibers mm -hmm. to go through a large disc area or a small disc area. So let me so. tell let me tell patients just just so you understand. So if you're looking through a water hose, yes. and so you're looking at that inner circle versus the outer circle. Right. So the outer circle is the area. Exactly. And the cup is the inner circle. Exactly. And the okay. disc is the outter circle. You got it. Okay, so one more time, explain so, how that number helps so you. So the disc area helps me because, for example, this patient, disc area is about 2.28 millimeters square. An average uh, disc area for a normal optic nerve is about 1.5 to 2.5 mm -hmm, millimeters mm -hmm. squared. So I know that this person's disc, uh, a cup, I'm sorry, I know that sure, this person's It's confusing. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's very confusing. This so this is person's disc. Okay, the whole, the outer part. Okay, the outer part. Larger yep. side. So if they have a larger cup, meaning they have a larger inner circle, it might be mm -hmm. still normal mm -hmm. because they have a larger outer circle. Mm -hmm. Now, if their disc area said 1.5 and they came in with a large cup, mm -hmm. to me that's very concerning mm -hmm. because they have a small disc area, small outer circle, but they also have a large inner circle circle. Mm -hmm. So that means that there aren't a lot of nerves traveling through that space mm -hmm. and it's making a lot of empty space. So the number you're concerned about, when you see that number, you're looking for something that is, if you're thinking physiologic cupping, that it's mm -hmm. normal, right. then it would be above 2.5 or exactly. roughly. Right. More than two. And if it's about 1.5, and then what's the other comparison uh, in terms of disc 
area, right? Yes. So you're looking at the disc area. Disc okay. area. Okay, exactly. And then it also gives you the cup to disc ratio, mm-hmm. which, you know, I think it actually does a good job of measuring okay, out. Okay, got it. Yep. So um, I think it's a good objective measure. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. before I even go in the room and examine the patient, I can see what their disc area is. I can see what the machine is predicting as their cup to disc. Mm-hmm. So I kind of already have an idea maybe of what the patient is concerned about. Maybe they've been told by their referring doctor that they have large cup to disc. Mm-hmm. And I already know my level of concern. That right. if you know they have large nerves, so I, I'm probably not going to mind that they have a large cup to disc right, ratio. Exactly. And so this is a very common um, question patients ask of what does it mean to have big cups? And the, and the classic joke at Harvard, which is really off color, <laughs> is the doctor that goes into the lady and says, "You have big cups," and she's like, "Oh, thank you." <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of confusing yeah. because we're talking about the optic nerve and not you know this. Different, anyway, different kind of cups. Different kind of cups. Yeah. <laughs> but it is a cup to disc ratio, so exactly. it's the inner circle compared to the outer circle. And so this is very exciting because it's uh, helping us diagnose glaucoma even earlier. Okay, so we're going to wrap it up. We're getting we're going to do this more again because I sure. want to go through when you decide to treat. We'll go through the GCA, the um, the GCA, ganglion yeah. cell, the ganglion cell follow. analysis. We'll do a part two of this. And thank you to Katya who held the camera the whole time with her arms that are sore from working out today. <laughs> thank, thank you, Dr. Gard. Thank, thank you, everybody. Appreciate Please subscribe. Pass this on to friends. Thank, thank you. you.